Hello and welcome to another episode of Bicep For Real. This week's episode we're going to be jumping back a little bit. We've got a new feature that's available that's going to replace some of our old stuff that we're going to want to have a look at. And this in particular is parameter files. So if you remember from episode two, I think when we started using a parameter file to allow us to pass in different configurations depending on whether we were deploying to dev or production or whatever um, configuration we wanted to use. And we used the JSON parameter file um, to do that. Now this works fine, um, but at the time obviously we mentioned the fact that this is a hangover from the ARM days. It, it's not bicep specific. Um, and Microsoft have recently released the feature to allow you to use bicep parameter files instead. And just like with bicep over ARM, bicep parameter files are easier to read, to use, and just generally a bit nicer. And so we're going to take a look at how to actually use those. Now just to be clear, the ARM JSON based parameter files still work. They're not being removed. So if you've got those already and you don't want to change them, that's absolutely fine. But if you do want to change them, or if you're getting started with Bicep, and if you come at this video for the first time, um, then I would recommend you start using the Bicep parameter files rather than using the JSON one. It'll just make your life a bit easier. So let's dive in and take a look at how they work and how to set them up. Okay, so here we are back in VS Code with our Bicep files. And you'll remember from previous videos, we've got this dev.json file which is the actual parameter file we're using to pass in the settings for dev. And then we've got a test.json, which is the settings for test and so on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this dev.json with the bicep parameter file. So we're gonna create a new file and we'll call it dev dot bicep param. That's the extension to use for those parameter files. Okay, and now the first thing we need to do in the bicep parameter file is we need to create a using statement. So this basically tells this file what the top what the actual bicep file it's going to be associated with is. So in our case, this is the main.bicep. So if we're using, and then we need the path to that folder, which is a relative one. So in our case, it's here in infrastructure and then main.bicep. Okay, so that's telling us which bicep file we're going to use with this parameter. And the main reason to do that is it gives us some intelligence. So if you hover over it, it actually tells us that we're missing a load of parameters from this file um, because we haven't created them yet. Um, ignore Copilot trying to be helpful. Um, not. <laughs> okay, so now we need to actually give it the parameter files. Sorry, the actual parameters. So the first one we've got is location. So we same syntax as um, with a normal bicep file, use the keyword param, and then the name, but you don't actually give it a type in here. Um, so we just leave it as location, and then you give it a value. And so our value is going to be West Europe. And then what else have we got? So the next one is the prefix, and we're going to use that prefix. So we do param prefix equals that one. Okay, and so on. So we're going to go through and transfer over those values. So I will just quickly do that, and we'll come back. Okay, so we've just quickly moved those over, and you can see already, you know, this this amount of code here. What seven lines of code? is much simpler and easier to read than all of this. Um, so a big win from there already. Now, where it gets a little tricky is this last value here. So you see here we've got this container registry password, which is a secret. And so we're pulling that from Key Vault. Now, bicep parameter files don't currently support Key Vault references like we have here, which is, yeah, not wonderful. Um, and we need to find a way to deal with, with this. Now, obviously we do not want to put the secret directly in the code. Um, that would make it visible to anyone who has access to the Git repo or anything like that. Bad idea, so that's not, not gonna work. So there are a couple of things we can do. Now, one of the benefits of moving to a bicep parameter file is that it actually supports some of the bicep functions as well. And so one way we could deal with this is using a function. Let's get rid of that. Um, and we could use the read environment variable function. And so we'll put that in, we'll change this. There we go. And so this would allow us to grab that value from an environment variable. Yeah, so what we could do is, is we could set an environment variable using our build pipeline or whatever process we're using to actually run the bicep file to store that password into an environment variable and then pass that into our code at runtime. Now that would resolve the issue with not putting the secret in the code. Obviously that secret is in plain text. 
in your um, in your environment variables on the machine that's running it, which may or may not be a problem, um, but something to think of. The other approach is to actually um, go and retrieve that password as part of the bicep code itself, rather than the parameters file, and that's what we will we will do. So let's get rid of that. Um, so let's go have a look at that second. The other thing just to mention is I've used that environment valid function. You can use pretty much any bicep function within there. So you could, if you want to, um, you know, use the I don't know, lower, lowercase function or union function or anything like that, you can use those in parameter files to construct your, uh, your files. Okay. So let's quickly go and make that change as well to go and deal with this password issue. So we'll do that. We can do that in our main.bicep file because that's where it's passed into. Um, so you can see here we've got this container registry password string value here. So we're just going to, for the minute, remove that. Now, to be able to get that secret out of the key vault, we are still going to need some information about the key vault um, that we would have had in the reference before, primarily the key vault ID and the secret. Uh, name. So if we go back over to our JSON file, we've got this key vault reference here. I am just for the moment going to copy that and put it in here. Not to use it, obviously it doesn't work, but we're just going to use that as a as a reference. And so we're going to have a couple of additional parameters that we're going to need. Um, and so we're just going to call this uh, secret key vault ID. And the value for that is going to be this. And then we're going to have a pram secret name there as well, which is that value there. So let's get rid of this. You can see, obviously, it's complaining at the moment because I'm trying to pass in parameters now that don't exist. So let's go and deal with that first. So we go back over to our main bicep file. And we're going to first off going to delete this container registry password parameter because we don't want that anymore and then we're going to add a new param called secret key vault id and that's a string and an another param called secret name which is a string as well and that should now mean this stops erroring yep and we're going to need those to actually use the secret so let's do that work first let's do it at the very beginning here before we do anything else so we're going to need to firstly reference the existing key vault Okay, so this is a key vault resource, the key vault, Microsoft the key vault resource with the existing keyword. And then we're going to go in here. And what we need to get is we need the name and we need the scope. Now, at the moment, we've got the secret key vault resource ID, which is obviously the collect the ID that contains the subscription, the resource group, and the key vault name. Um, now, we could have passed in three separate parameters for that. We could have asked for a name, a resource group, and a subscription. And if you prefer to do that, that's absolutely fine. What we've done is do it in one. We're going to have to split that to actually get those values. And so we're going to put them in a variable to make life a bit easier. So let's give it secret key vault name. And that we're going to use the split command. Um, so we're going to use the split command here. Actually, I probably shouldn't have listened to Copilot there because it's made that overly complicated. There we go. That's what we actually need. So this basically splits that resource ID on the forward slash. And then it takes the eighth value, which I know the eighth value is the actual um, name of the key vault. Um, if we go back to our bicep file, you can actually count them sections if you want. So two, three, four, five, six... Seven, eight. We also want to do the same for the key vault group. And we want the key vault subscription as well. Okay. Now, we're being a bit safe here because you don't actually need the subscription ID if the resource group is in the same subscription as the actual um, a deployment. But just to be safe, we're going to use it. That will allow people to point to a key vault in a different subscription if they really want to. 
And so when we fill in these values here, we've got the name, we're gonna use that secret key vault name value. And then, that's not. And then we want the scope, which uses the resource group. We're gonna pass in the, I think it's subscription first. Yeah. And then the resource group name. There we go. Okay, and so that should give us the actual key vault we need to reference. And then if we go down to where we're actually using this, we can see here is the error. So instead of using the variable or the parameter even, we're gonna use the get secret command. So if we get the key vault reference, that's the one we created up above, and there is a get secret function. And in that, it's gonna probably we're gonna pass in the secret name, which is in that variable, and that's it. So that will now go and go ahead and pull that from the key vault for us. Now, this works because we are passing this into a module within our main template. If we needed to use that key vault value directly in the main template, so let's say we had a resource that we were creating directly in our main template, you wouldn't be able to use the get secret uh, function there. It would complain that it doesn't have the value at compile time. The fact that we're using a module and so under the hood we're using a nested ARM template allows it to pass those things around. If you only had the one template, the top level one, and you weren't using any modules like we're doing there, then you can't use this approach and you're back to either using the environment variable option I showed before, or you would probably have to stick with using a JSON parameter file um, until that gets changed, if it does, to support key vault references directly in the parameter file. Um, so just bear that in mind. The get secret option is a great one, but it only works when you've got that modular approach. It's one of the reasons why it's good to use modules, um, but obviously if you've got a very simple template where you don't want to go down that approach, um, then you'll have to use an alternative instead. So that should be it. Our parameter file is all done. We've got the values that we need to do in there. We've, we've sorted out the key vault piece. Um, we could add any additional ones on there. If you want to use any functions or anything, we can do that. Um, but we are good to go. And so to run this doesn't really change much. Let me use the AZ group, uh, sorry, AZ deployment group create command. We'll give it a name for the deployment, whatever you like. In a resource group as before. And then we need to give it the parameter file. Uh, so that should be in configurations uh, dev dot bicep param file. Now, you will notice that we are not passing in the actual template file. So one of the benefits of doing this because of that using statement is we don't actually need to tell the CLI where the template file is. It will just reference it from the using statement for us. So let's go ahead and give that a go. All being well, that should kick off the deployment using those parameters we passed in, as it did before, but now using that nice new bicep parameters file rather than the ugly JSON from the ARM version. So I hope that made sense and you're happy now with how to use the new bicep parameter files and you're encouraged to start using them within your bicep projects because I do really think they are a simpler option to the old JSON version. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to add them in the comments section of the video. I'm always happy to answer those. Uh, but until next time, have a great rest of your day.